Welcome back everyone. So if you remember over the last few weeks, we've been studying several of the minor prophets. Um, today we're going to take a look at Zechariah. He was a prophet to the returned exiles. Zechariah saw many visions such as horsemen, a gold lampstand, a basket, and a flying scroll. These visions shared that one day God would live with his people. God promised a king who would save his people. That king is Jesus. The gold lampstand here, or seven spouted lamp, is a reminder to God's people that God was with them and would help them rebuild the temple. Our lamp also reminds me of a special promise God made about Jesus. God promised a king who would save his people. So I'm going to read a couple things from the Bible. I'm going to turn to Zechariah chapter 1 um, and read verses 2 through 4. And then I'm also going to read chapter 7 verses 11 through 13. And the Bible says, The Lord who rules over all was very angry with the people long ago. And now he says to us, Return to me. Then I will return to you, announces the Lord. Do not be like your people of long ago. The earlier prophets gave them my message. I said, stop doing what is evil. Turn away from your sinful practices. But they would not listen to me. They would not pay attention, announces the Lord. Also over here in chapter 7, it says, But they refused to pay attention to the Lord. They were stubborn. They turned their backs and covered their ears. They made their hearts as hard as the hardest stone. They wouldn't listen to the law. They wouldn't pay attention to the Lord's messages. So the Lord who rules over all was very angry. After all, his spirit had spoken to his people through the earlier prophets. When I called, they did not listen, says the Lord. So when they called, I would not listen. So these two verses are telling us that not only were the people stubborn and disobedient, I gathered that they kind of acted childish a little bit. Like um, it said in the one verse that they were holding their hands over their ears as if not to listen to him. I think that um, shows a terrible act of disobedience. Um, the Lord also mentions a hardened heart. So even though they knew the Lord, they were resisting his law and what he wanted for them. Remember, God knows best. Then in Zechariah 2 verses 10 through 12, we find out this. People of Zion, shout and be glad. I am coming to live among you, announces the Lord. At that time, many nations will join themselves to me, and they will become my people. I will live among you, says the Lord. Then you will know that the Lord who rules over all has sent me to you. He will receive Judah and his share in the Holy Land, and he will choose Jerusalem again. So in this verse, it tells us that God doesn't forget the people. He didn't forget them. He won't forget us. And he would live among them. Remember, God promised a king who would save his people. That plan is Jesus. He came to earth as a baby. He died on the cross as a man. And three days later, he was raised from the dead as our Savior. So we need to just trust in God. Let's go to the video and see how Joel can explain it better. What do you think of when I say the word hero? Do you think of firefighters or policemen or lifeguards? Sure, all those people do hero type things, but a hero can be anyone dedicated to saving and protecting others. Hello, I'm Explore the Bible Boy. Today, 
I'm taking you to the military room at the old jail museum to learn about what it means to be a hero. I'm a hero. You want to see me save something? Observe. Pretty impressive, huh? Explore the Bible, boy. Knows how to save someone a seat. <laughs> Go ahead and turn your Bibles to the book of Zechariah and get ready to discover the greatest hero in history. I'm Joel, aka Explore the Bible Boy, and this is Explore the Bible on location. Oh, excuse me, sir. No, this seat is saved for a friend. <laughs> okay, thank you. Hero! This is Zechariah, a prophet to the exiles who came back to Judah from Babylon. The Jews still had enemies all around them. Who would save them? Did the Jews need a new king? Well, yes, but a different kind of king than those they had before. Zechariah told the Jews that God promised a righteous and humble king was coming to bring salvation to the people. This king would be a hero unlike any other. Well, it looks like the person I'm saving this seat for never came, but that doesn't change the fact that Explore the Bible Boy faithfully saved the seat. Mandate fulfilled. So I'm just gonna take this off. Oh, hey guys, it's me. It's, it's Joel. <laughs> I know, the mask is amazing. Today, we are gonna meet a very special, awesome person who's gonna teach us a lot about what it means to be brave and to be a hero. Come on inside. All right, everybody, we are here with Curtis. Curtis, thanks for visiting with us today. Always welcome at the Old Jail Museum in Lawrenceburg. So, Curtis, tell us a little bit about this museum. How did it get started? The county gave the museum to the Historical Society in 1976 when they closed this jail and uh, started a new one. And uh, so the Historical Society you know, started to make a museum out of it and put artifacts in here from the county. This is such a cool place. And what do you get to do here at the museum? Oh, I get to see all the things that are brought in. People donate us stuff from, from all over the county, but the military part is what really interests me. All these uniforms have a story. And uh, they are all the way from the uh, First World War all the way up through the Persian Gulf War. And the men that wore them have had to be very patriotic to the country and face dangers and stuff. Yeah, talk about this room that we're in, because this room is very unique in the museum. What types of things is this room trying to honor and commemorate? It honors all of the different stories of valor that these men have put forth, risking their life uh, in battle, uh, getting to battle, just doing all kinds of things, uh, all different kinds of stories. Uh, we do have a gentleman that won the Distinguished Service Cross here in Lawrence County. He was in the Philippines and he was actually a Navy frogman during World War II and he got attached to an Army unit. Uh, he was a demolition expert and uh, they had a bridge that they had to cross to get to a POW camp to rescue 4,000 American prisoners. Uh, in that process, he had to dismantle 60 bombs on that bridge so that the Army could cross the bridge. Later on, one of the POWs in that camp said, how do you think a man like Pat Sutton for saving 4,000 lives? So that's how important that was. And Pat Sutton came back to Lawrence County and ended up getting elected to Congress. So he was a, a, a very big hero to a lot of people. Uh, John Gwynn, during World War I, was awarded the Silver Star. He was a courier along the front lines in Europe. And uh, he had to deliver a message quite a distance. And over that time, he could have faced machine gun fire, poison gas attacks, uh, uh, landmines, land all kinds of stuff. And he managed to deliver that message, which probably saved lives along the line because it, you know, they wouldn't have sent him on this dangerous mission if he had not had to get the message to him. And he managed to survive. 
and he was awarded the Silver Star, one of the earliest Silver Stars ever given. It was started in the early 1900s, and this was 1918, and we have the certificate awarding him that Silver Star signed by General John Pershing, the Commander-in-Chief. So you're telling me all these uniforms, all this cool stuff in here, these represent real stories, like not fake superheroes, but real people? Real people who faced real danger uh, and managed to survive and get back home. Wow. Well, this is super fascinating. Thank you, Curtis, for letting us visit today. You're welcome. Through Zechariah, God promised a king who would save his people. God promised that a humble man was coming to save God's people. This man would be riding on a donkey's colt, and he would be coming to save them. Who does that sound like to you? Exactly, Jesus. The king God promised was Jesus. Jesus came riding on a donkey's colt, and then he saved God's people, not from their outward enemies, but from their enemies of sin and death. Because of Jesus, people can be saved from their sin and rescued from being separated from God forever. Jesus is the ultimate hero. You see this? This is a picture of James Patrick Sutton. Curtis was telling us about him earlier, how he helped to remove 60 110 pound bombs from that bridge so that he could help save 4,000 lives. That's incredible. This room is dedicated to heroes like him and so many other heroes who risked their lives to help save others. But you know, the greatest hero in all of history is the king God promised, Jesus. Jesus is the humble hero the world needs most. And that's what we discover when we dig into the book of Zechariah. I'm Joel, AKA Explore the Bible Boy. And this is Explore the Bible on location. You guys have seen me save many things. And a coupon just came in, in my email, to save money on a milkshake. Until next time, milkshake away. Okay, so, Jesus, greatest hero of all time. All right, we need to remember that. Our memory verse today is Zechariah 14:9 which says, the Lord will be king over the whole earth. On that day, there will be one Lord and his name will be the only name. You know, um, we've been learning about a lot of truths over the last couple weeks. Um, we, we learned that we all sin, no matter what, we're all gonna sin. And the truth that goes with that is, God cannot ignore our sin, but he will forgive us when we repent. Um, God spoke through Zechariah to tell the people not to be like their ancestors and return to following God. God told the people that he would live among them one day. And our truth today is God promised a king who would save his people. God promised to send Jesus. Jesus was born as a baby. He died on a cross to pay for the price of our sin. Mine, yours, your mom, your dad, your friend, everybody. He was raised from the dead three days later. God did all this for me, for you, for everyone. God desires that we be true followers and not just pretenders. God should be most important in our lives. That was another truth we learned. And we can take all of these truths and find them all right here in our Bible. So let's take all of these truths we've been learning and start applying them to our lives. Let's pray. Father God, we love you and we thank you for these truths. We, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for sending him to this earth as a baby, dying on the cross as a man, and raising from the dead to be our savior. Lord, we love you and we thank you for all these lessons that you give us. Lord, we are asking that you help us apply them to our lives on a daily basis. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for protecting us. Lord, keep us safe this week. Lead us and guide us and bring us back again safely next week. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
stay tuned for the activity video. I'll see you guys next week. Okay, here we go. Time for your activity this week. So we have to remember that over the summer, we've been trying to memorize not only the books of the Bible, but putting them in the right divisions. So what I want you to do this week is I want you to play hangman. Now, I know some of you are new learners with spelling, so you can, let's say, cheat a little. So, in the, what I want you to do is play hangman with the minor prophets. There's 12 minor prophets. They start with Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. So, parents, what I want you to do is I want you to choose one of these minor prophets, play hangman with your kids, and they, if they start to struggle with letters, they can look in the table of contents in their Bible for help. So good luck and have fun memorizing.